Yeah. And sin not, for some have not the knowledge of Yahweh. Keep reading. I speak this to your shame. Yes, sir. See, a lot of people don't have the knowledge of the Most High. Uh -huh. He's speaking this to your shame. He's speaking this to your shame because you're not embracing what he's trying to show you on a day-to-day -day basis. Ain't you tired? I'm tired of it. I'm tired of looking on the news and seeing my people get out the car. They say, oh, he pulled out a gun. Bow, bow, bow. Now the brother dead. Yes, Ain't y'all tired of seeing that? Come. When you tired of seeing that, then stand up, wake up, and, and wake your people up. It's time. Come. Time is drawing nigh. And look, it's going to get deeper than that, man. That's, that ain't it. It's bigger than, it's even bigger than that. The, the wrath and the judgment that's going to get poured down is going to get a lot worse. Because the Father is putting the Spirit on the other nations to where they are able to afflict us if we not under his under the wing of the Most High. We're not hiding under the shadow of the Almighty. We choosing that. We choosing death. That's why he said, I said before you life and death, choose you this day whom you're going to serve. Right. Who you going to serve? You're going to serve yourself. You're going to serve your lust. You're going to serve your oppressor. Or are you going to serve your uh, serve the Most High? Come. Which one you going to serve? Come. All right. Keep reading. It says, Return unto the Lord and forsake thy sins. Make thy prayers before his face. See, we got to keep reading. And offend less. We got to make our prayers before the Most High's face and offend less, but it's an order to it. See what I'm saying? Bring it because out. in Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 19, it says, Those that pray, they're, they're, the, the, the wicked, their prayers are an abomination unto the Most High. Right. So when the wicked making a prayer to the Most High, it's not getting to him. God. But it's a precept in the, in the, in the Apocrypha that talk about when the humble pray, that prayer pierces the clouds. Yeah. See what I'm saying? So when you humble and you walk in meek and you walk in lowly and you just waiting on the Father to move on your behalf and you doing your part, he going to do his part because his word don't return those and void. God. See what I'm saying? When the Father say he going to do something, he going to do it. When the Father say he going to destroy this world, he going to destroy this world. And guess what happened? Right. It's getting right. destroyed. God. We got to have more compassion on our people. Start praying for your people. God. Why? Because now we got brothers and sisters in Florida. Brothers and sisters in Texas that's flooded out right now. They in the midst of the judgment. So pray that they stay steadfast. That way, if something do happen, and if time do run out, that, you know, them brothers and sisters did their part. Pray yeah. for them. Pray for strength for your people because the time is drawing down, man. The sand is dropping drop by drop, drop by drop, day by day. Right. We running out of time, man. God. It says, verse 26, the, uh, Sirach 17, 26. Turn again to the Most High. And turn away from iniquity. It says turn again to the Most High and turn away from iniquity. Why is it saying turn again? Because at one point we was with the Father. At one point we was a nation established above all nations. Why? Look, man. Look, look. All these things, the riches, the glories that the Gentile had, we had at one point. God. It was just set apart from the world. It was different from what the world had. Right. Keep reading. Well, he will lead thee out of darkness. See, the Father going to lead us out of darkness, man. Into a light of health. He going to bring us into a light of health. But we keep following for what men teach us. We keep following for men, what men teaching us. What men, when men teach us that the, that the Bible is not real, we file for it. When men teach us Christianity, we file for it. Keep reading. And hate thou abomination. See, we got to start hating abominations. What do they teach you in the Christian church? Oh, Thanksgiving coming. We need to eat this one. We got some ham that we passing out today. Make sure y'all come get y'all ham. See what I'm saying? Presenting it as a blessing. And they doing it ignorantly because they don't know. But the Bible sp teaches specifically against it. Yeah. Then you get these um, manipulative scholars who come out and they like, well, you know, well, the Bible says that God made all things clean. But if you specifically read in the book of Acts chapter 10, you will actually see that when he brought up those, when he brought up receiving that food, he, as well mentioned in the same, same darn chapter that, he was that they were supposed to receive the brothers that was coming unto them. That was a parable. Come. The father deals in deep and dark sayings. But it's only for the wise to see. That's why he said they have a heart. They have a, they have eyes, but they see not, and they have ears, but they hear not. Keep reading. It says, And hate thou abomination vehemently. Keep reading. Who shall praise the most high in the grave? Instead of them which live and give thanks. See, look, while you alive, you're supposed to give thanks. Huh. You can't be ashamed to lift up your hands and praise the Most High. We can't be too hard to get on our knees if we have to. Get on our knees amongst people. Look, you can't do it to be seen of men. But if it's the time to drop on your knees and praise the Most High, do it. We have mighty men like David, man. When Dave, David was a, a man that worshipped the Father, but he also was a brother you didn't want to play with. You didn't want to play with David. Look, David was so much of a compassionate and righteous man for his people 
that when, when Saul wanted to destroy David, guess what David did? He fled from him. When the Amalekite boy thrust the sword through, through Saul and the Amalekite boy came to, to David and told David what happened, David called one of the younger Israelite men and told him to thrust the sword through him because you killed my master. Yeah, he you spared him three times. Yeah. He spared him three times. Yeah, so like, look, man, we, we got to look at this stuff, man. The father gave us the prime examples of men that we're supposed to follow. And, I, and even with that, the man is just an example. He's just a testimony, but we don't put trust in him. We don't make, we don't put our trust in the strength of a man. I got a point. Uh, Cause Daniel, Daniel went through a similar situation. Like uh, even when you're looking at things like this, it don't even have to be physical. He wasn't physically, you know what I'm saying? Nobody could physically mess with David. But Daniel didn't have to do anything. The most high was getting him out of stuff through the spirit, all because he worshiped him. You see what right, I'm saying? Right, right, so right. It, it don't even have to be physical. Like, you know, I'm not gonna mess with him because something always happened to me. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And he not even touching me. So yeah. God is dealing with dudes. Right, so. right, right. Be. right. He was like, man, through my righteousness, the father gonna show him. through his righteousness that he was, wasn't was a liar. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And those who went into the lion's den were ate up because they had the spirit of witness. Yeah. And then they weren't covered. They wasn't covered. And see, that's what I'm saying, man. Look, look, man. We just got to deal in wisdom, especially in the time that we in. All right, get that precept from y'all. I want to say one more thing. When it said, and hate abomination vehemently, me and the I looked up what the word vehemently means, and it means with a passion. With a passion. Hate abomination vehemently. Hate it with a passion. You know what I'm saying? Like, the young I was moved when he saw something that was against the Father's will. So I understand where his passion come from because he told us to hate it with a passion. You know what I'm saying? Because truthfully, we're supposed to be executing judgment if we really truly keep it to it. We're supposed to be executing a judgment. We say that we're we keeping the Shabbat, we keep the feast days, but when it comes to this, we're going to leave this in the Father's hand. We're supposed to be executing judgment. It's not the Father's judgment righteous, and it's not his judgment that he told us to do his vengeance. Because he told us to do it in that order. That's his business. That's what we got to understand. That's what we got to understand. That the business of the Lord was written. And sometimes the business of the Lord is through executing his judgment. Yeah. Book of Psalms, chapter 73, verse 11. Verse 1. Verse 1. Truly, Yahweh is good to Israel. Even to such as are of a clean heart. See, the thing is, what people have to realize is, it says that the Father is good unto Israel. He's good unto Yasharal. He's good unto Israel. He's good unto Yasharal. However you want to pronounce it, the main thing we got to understand is the weight of your mouth. Huh. We got to stop making, having divides in between brothers and sisters because of small, small things. And focus on a big part. We gotta continue. We gotta continue to encourage each other to do the right thing. Cause the Father is good to such that are over. He is. He is. Um. He is good to those that are of a clean heart. And how do you get your heart clean? It's by taking heed to the word. It says that the word of the Lord are pure words tried in the fire seven times. So if you understand that this word is tried, that means that this word is, is refined, it's proven that it's fact. Right. It's proven that it's good to you. You want to know how it's good for you? Look at the evidence. Right. Look at the fruit of the tree. Look at the apples that fell from the tree. Look at us right here. We standing right here showing that this word is a real seed. It's a real spiritual seed, man. Right. Keep right. Hallelujah. Verse 2. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. How many, how many of us been put, in, been put in this place where we almost slipped off? We almost fell off because something in this world got too impelling, impel, impelling to our flesh. Keep reading. Come. My steps had well nigh slipped. See, he said his steps had well nigh slipped. Keep reading. Mm -hmm. For I was envious at the, at the foolish. See, look, look at what he's saying. I was envious at the foolish. You know how enticing foolishness looks sometimes? Yeah. Come. Man, bro, foolishness can look so enticing. It can look so enticing. But God, foolishness don't last that long. That's the thing. When you get done with foolishness, foolishness like, dang, yeah. why did I even do that? It was a waste of time. Okay. Right. Keep reading. <laughs> For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. You see prosperity of the wicked, man. Look, you don't have to follow the foolish to be prosperous, by the way. Okay. You don't have to. The stuff that, the, that they got, you can get righteousness if the Father wants to grant it to you. You just got to do your part and wait. Be patient. Don't try to get it like they get it. See what I'm saying? Because at one point, Israel was one of the most established nations on the earth. God. We had all the gold, we had all the silver, and we had order. Order keeps it in. 
See what I'm saying? Because you can have a nation that have everything, but they deal foolishly with it. Sodom, for instance. Okay. Sodom was a prosperous nation, a prosperous group of people. Sodom Egypt. and Gomorrah was four great cities. But when, when they chose to operate in their Sodomite ways, then the father destroyed that nation because they wicked. Uh, all right. Pre Precept, uh, Sirach 5 and 8. How y'all doing today? Yeah, we, out, we out here teaching the Bible. We trying to get the truth out. So if y'all can, if y'all got the time, listen to us for a second. If not, if not, can you go read Deuteronomy chapter 28? For me, please. Deuteronomy 28 in the Bible. Read it sincerely. And when you read it, think of your people and see how much stuff you can compare to your people. That's right. Okay. All right. That's all I'm asking. We ran out of flyers. Hold on, one second. I got a flyer for y'all. So, hold the camera right quick. Up. We got a flyer for you. So, Rock chapter five, verse eight. Set not thy heart upon goods unjustly gotten. Ooh. Set not thy hearts upon goods unjustly gotten. What does unjust mean? Unjust just mean righteous. So, if you get in something unjustly meaning unrighteously meaning. You know what? I told this brother I'm selling a certain type of item, but I'm really going to get over him. I'm going to come up off this brother. Right. I'm going to jig him real quick. I'm going to jig him real quick. See what I'm saying? People are actually doing this stuff. You getting over, you being an extortion. You getting over on your people, but if you're doing anything unjustly, it's going to be brought down. Right. And it's going to be brought to the light because the scripture says that all things done in, in the dark are going to be brought to the light. And guess how many times I've seen that for yeah. Even with myself, I'll be doing something them. All of a sudden, a brother will come up with a conversation like, yeah, I, you know, people that's doing that, you can convict me. Look at this. We got a crystal. I'm going to have us raise our hand if it's okay for you. Look. See, look, 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 look. Look, I'll do it every way. Just don't tell nobody. Fornication at its greatest. Look, the women that's sitting on top of the hill telling your daughters, look, um, Give it all away, don't tell nobody no more. Then your kids going in and taking that in and applying that in their life. Now you're wondering why your daughter is starting to have more of an attitude. She's switching. She popping her lips at you. She, she doing all this extra stuff. You know what I mean? She listening to all this poisonous music and this entertainment. It's, it's, it's causing her to be envious of the wicked. Man, come on, let's get it. Book of Psalms, chapter 73, verse 4. For there are bands in their death. But their strength is firm. It says there are bands in their death, meaning they can't get away from death. Just like we was banded up, just like we was bunt, we was in chains. We couldn't get out them shackles when they had us going into the boats. Okay. That's how their destruction comes. They can't get away from their destruction. It's coming. It's coming. Keep reading. They are not in trouble as other men. They're not in trouble like we are. See what I'm saying? And that's not even just talking about other nations. That's even talking about some of our people. Right. Some of our people are Judas walking around. Yeah. That's just another Judas sister or brother walking around, waiting for your destruction. See what I'm saying? Especially when you walking in Hamashiach or you walking in Hamashiach. See what I'm saying? When you walking in the Messiah, you're going to have haters in your people. You're going to have haters among you. You're going to have, definitely going to have haters of other nations. So you got to be ready for what you obtaining, what you walking in, and you cannot get envious of them. Because ultimately, these people don't be happy anyway, man. Look, it's going to explain why they don't be happy. Keep reading. They are not in trouble as other men. Neither are they plagued like other men. They're not plagued like you. Keep reading. Therefore, pride compasses them, compasses them about as a chain. Keep reading. Violence covered them as a garment. Violence. Look, have you ever had met a brother that got so much rage in him because of because of how foul he is? Uh, I didn't been. I didn't went to parties with brothers and they talk about man. I'm ready, for man. Shoot. You know what I mean? They just be ready to destroy destroy other people. Yeah, true. Because some stuff, so, something that happened to them. Because they off inwardly. So the other nations especially, they off inwardly. It's just different how the Father created us and how he created them. Keep reading. Verse 7. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than their heart could wish. They have more than their own heart could wish. They got way more than they want, than they need. Some stuff they buy, they spend $10,000, $15,000 on and don't even use it but one time in their lifetime. What type of stuff is that? And then here you go. You got Big Mama over there, you know, getting her child support, um, you know, getting her checks month by month, passing out money to her grandkids because they need something. Everybody passing down clothes to each other, passing around shoes, wearing your friend's shoes, you wearing your friend's clothes. See what I'm saying? 
you you getting five dollars in your gas tank, you straight. See what I'm saying? These people don't never see empty in their car. They always got their car filled. They always feel full. They don't got They don't even think about food because they always got food. Meanwhile, you hungry and naked and destitute. Keep reading. Verse eight. They are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. Look at this, man. They speak. You know how many times I done turned on the news and hear people talking about? I'm not really a big advocate for the whole uh, receiving the money, the reparations for what happened to us as slaves, because you really can't you can't fix that with money. No. You can't fix what's messed what what I messed up mentally. What happened to me mentally? You can't fix that with no money. Okay. You can't get no man with schizophrenia. $50,000 or $50 million and tell him, man, go enjoy your life. I'm so sorry for what I did to you. It don't work like that. You can't give no brother with, with a, a deep, a fourth degree level, a fourth level of paranoia. See what I'm saying? You can't give him no money and tell him go enjoy his life. You can't give nobody nothing that's been, it's been, it isn't tempered with their DNA that they didn't got afflicted so much. That they been, they didn't got, um, got so much stuff, so much stuff that happened to them now at this point that it's messed, it's in their genes that it get passed down to their son. Right. And in and, and, and a spiritual term, the curses are upon them. And the father is allowing it, you to do it because, uh, because his people are being disobedient. Right. Keep reading. They speak loftily. They set their mouth against the heavens. See, they set their mouth against the heavens. Against the heavens. See, the Gentiles understanding of creation. Their understanding of life, their understanding of people is totally different from what the Bible provides them. If you know anything, like for instance, the Aqua was touching on earlier how a lot of the, the um, characteristics, characteristics, characteristic traits that we that we have.